The Jacksonville Jaguars give a monster deal to Josh Allen, and it continues a questionable offseason in North Florida. We'll dive into that on a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Let's roll. Baby. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in to a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Tyler Rowland, local expert for the Locked On Titans Podcast. Here back again with my co-host, Alex Clancy from Locked On Cardinals. Glad to have you back in the chair, Alex. Glad you're feeling better. We got a lot to discuss. And as always, Alex, major NFL news on a Wednesday. Last week, we got the Stephon Diggs trade. This week, we get a big time. $150 million deal in Jacksonville with edge rusher Josh Allen. We're going to break down our thoughts on that move and talk about the top three trades so far in the NFL all season, top three free agent signings as well. Before we get into it, do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Make sure that you visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Thank you for making Locked On NFL your first listen each and every day. Remember, around the clock, NFL content all year round here on the Locked On NFL podcast. It's your team every day. And with the draft just two weeks away, this is a great time to get locked in to the best national NFL show in the business. But with that being said, Alex, again, we got a huge deal in Jacksonville. Edge rusher Josh Allen coming off a 17 and a half sack season, setting the record in Jacksonville for the most sacks in an individual year. He gets a five-year, $150 million contract with $88 million guaranteed. It makes him the third highest paid defensive player in the NFL. Again, a 17 and a half sack season last year, record breaking in Jacksonville. So you could argue that he deserved this payday. He was on the franchise tag. They get the long-term deal done. What are your initial thoughts for Jacksonville here? I mean, Jacksonville needs an identity. Right. They've needed an identity. They thought it was Blake Bortles. It wasn't. They thought it was, you know, the quarterbacks in between. It wasn't. They thought it was Trevor Lawrence. We don't know if it is. Maybe. So if it's Josh Allen, who, like, it's wild looking back at his draft out of Kentucky, where it's like, I cannot believe he went top five. And then he was okay. And then the other Josh Allen that he played against, against Buffalo, kind of like broke him out of this shell. And it's been great ever since. Mm -hmm. So you know what? If they're identity the first one since Saxonville from a handful of years ago is going to be their leading pass rusher cool just pick one because they don't have one and there's not a whole lot you can trust on that roster right now so he deserves it plus money's going to get more and more bananas as we go it's going to get insane with the way the caps the cap uh, situation is going to go up every year yeah and I, I think we're seeing that here because one of the things that I was looking at is how this compares to other edge rushing contracts and when you look at the other top edge rushers you have Nick Bosa at the top of the food chain five years 170 million dollars after that you have Josh Allen here at this rate but then Brian Burns just got a, a contract this all season after a trade to the Giants but you got to go all the way down to 125 million for Miles Garrett 120 million for Von Miller, 112 million for TJ Watt. Like you look at Miles Garrett and TJ Watt, who, in my opinion, are the best defensive players in the entire NFL. And they're no even nowhere even close to the 150 million that Josh Allen is getting here. So uh, I do agree with you that the money. You could focus on that if you want to, but with the cap exploding the way it is, maybe it isn't incredibly fair. To me, though, it's hard to ignore. It's hard to ignore that Josh Allen is now the third highest paid defensive player in the entire NFL. And I think the reality here is Jacksonville had to pay this and had to do this because their number one overall pick, Trevon Walker, has not lived up right. to the billing. He's been a good player, but he hasn't been a great player. He hasn't been a number one overall pick. And Aiden Hutchinson has been a much more impactful player who was the second overall pick that year in that draft at Detroit. So to me, I feel like this move by Jacksonville, while you could argue Josh Allen deserves the money, you could argue that he is a good enough player to get this payday. 
I think it's a little bit of an overpay, and I think that the desperation of Jacksonville's offseason so far has really caused them to do this. Letting Losing out on Calvin Ridley and trying to play that dangerous game of not giving up the pick but bringing him back, and that caused you to lose him. And now your number one wide receiver is Gabe Davis, who I think they overpaid for. I just think it's been a tough offseason in Jacksonville, and they kind of needed something to right the ship. And I think this kind of, this is like a perfume almost over the stink of Jacksonville's all season so far. But with that being said, though, like I mentioned early, Josh Allen was a franchise tag guy. And out of all of the guys who got the franchise tag, there were nine of them. We've seen seven get long-term deals. Now we've seen some trades, Legereus Sneed, and we saw Brian Burns, of course. But as for the guys who actually stayed with their team and got paid, I was just looking, you know, at the top three in my opinion, best moves. And I'm going to tell you, Jalen Johnson, cornerback for the yeah. Bears, four years, $76 million. He didn't even get top of the market money as a 24-year-old cornerback right. who you could argue was the best in the NFL last year. I'd still take some other cornerbacks over him, but just individual seasons. I liked Michael Pittman, three years, $70 million. I think that's a good bargain for Indy to keep Michael Pittman in-house. And then Kyle Duggar, I mean... I, I guess I would throw him in my third spot, four years, $58 million, good safety, versatile guy, deserved it. But I'm just not impressed with a lot of these contracts that some of these franchise tag guys got. Like Justin Matabike, I thought was an overpay. Um, I, I just think it's tough for teams with these franchise tag guys. Where do you put Josh Allen, I guess, in that ranking of, of, of best franchise tag signees who stayed with their team? I mean, towards the top, maybe right. the top. He's been yeah. consistent. He's been fine. Now, here's the thing. TJ Watt hasn't gotten a contract in a while. Miles, Miles right. Garrett hasn't gotten a contract in a while. So we're really looking at pass rusher, wide receiver, quarterback. As the, the question is going to be, does the next guy always have to get more than the guy before him? And right. we saw it with, we saw it with uh, Daniel Jones where he didn't. And that was what that was a point of contention. Like, you're not going to give him more money than Jalen Hurts. Like, what are we doing here? He right. deserved this is the market value for a yeah. top tier pass rusher. And he got yeah. it. And it's going to be team friendly in two years because there's going to be more money that's going to go on top of it. Now, the list, and you you, you brand down a bunch of guys who stay with their teams. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael Pittman. Um, we've seen Michael Pittman's been fine. He's been yeah, he's good. good. That's good. a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. We saw. You know, Legereus Sneed has had a year and a half of good football play. We've seen, you know, Jalen Johnson had one standout year. Like, you say that it's not top-tier money, and I agree. And it's not like these guys are seven-year vets of being Pro Bowls. Like, these are all right. future-paced things. Justin Matabike had a breakout year last year in Baltimore. Easy. And it yeah. wasn't necessarily – it's it's like implied odds. It's like you're paying this guy this money – you're betting on the come. You're betting on you're not you're not you're not paying it backward like baseball does. Right. Where it's like, you know what, you've been great for a decade. We're gonna give you $250 million that you're not gonna earn, but you didn't make a whole lot of money starting out, so we're gonna pay it backwards. Right. Now with football, like Justin Matabike, it's the system also. So with Josh Allen, where he ranks, I think it's the let's put it this way: it's the most important franchise tag signing of all of them for the team that he came back to. Yes. If they lost Justin Matabike, okay. If they lost Michael Pittman, okay. Okay. The Chiefs lost Legereus Sneed, okay. If okay. they lost Jalen Johnson, okay. If they lost Josh Allen, where's that defense? Disaster. Yeah, yeah, it would be a disaster for Jacksonville, 100%. That's a very good point. But with that being said, we are going to move forward here because we're looking at all the transactions in the NFL this offseason. What were the best trades? that we've seen so far, Woo! some of the best free agent signings, a lot to discuss on a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Before we continue, though, do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA, in the NHL. Baseball is also in full swing. FanDuel is the best place to bet every game. Also, the Masters is this weekend, baby, and they got great stuff on FanDuel to bet the Masters. And even better, right now, new customers get $100, $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, whether you win 
or you lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks to birdies. All on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Alex, let's continue today's Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast. Just broke down some franchise tag stuff. Josh Allen getting a huge payday in Jacksonville. But now I want to kind of expand it to the rest of the NFL. We got quite a bit of trades in the past month and a half, in April, in March. Awesome. There were quite a few. Um, and some that stand out as better than others. And some that, honestly, to me, stand out for the wrong reasons as well. So we'll talk about some of those. Looking at some of the trades, number one, I want to say Brian Burns getting traded to the New York Giants, a second-round pick. I like that Carolina picked up a second-round pick, and we talked, Alex, when we did, you know, extend, trade, tag, what we should do, and we both kind of thought trading Brian Burns is probably the best thing for this team. They're not close enough to winning to get the most out of his contract, so trading him to the New York Giants, I think that was a good move, but I think it's a good move for the Giants as well. Five years, $141 million. Look, Brian Burns only had eight sacks last year. So you're like, oh, Josh Allen, 17 and a half. Brian Burns. But I think we all understand that Brian Burns is a better player than the production. Being in Carolina, not having a ton of help, tough situations. I think he's capable of much, much more. At only 26 years old, I think the Giants can have one of the best pass rushers in the NFL for the next four years. And with where they're at as a team, they kind of need to do that. You pair him with Kayvon Thibodeau. You pair that uh, with Dexter Lawrence up front. They have a lot of good talent on the defensive line. So I like that move. Some other ones that I liked, obviously a little homer bias, but I love the Legereus Sneed trade for the Titans. Honestly, if I you know, if I didn't want to be accused of being a homer, I would put Legereus Sneed first because the Titans gave up a 2025 third round pick for the best press man corner in the NFL and didn't pay him top of the market money either. I only paid him four years, 76 million. He's about the fifth or sixth highest paid cornerback. So didn't break the, you know, reset the market. Didn't even give up a pick in this year's draft. I think that's a great trade for the Titans, regardless of whether that's the team that I cover or not. I think Keenan Allen, for a fourth-round pick with where the Bears are, bringing in a rookie quarterback, I think that's a great move as well. Are there any of those trades I named that you really like or any other trades that stand out to you that maybe I didn't mention? Uh, yes to both. First, interesting wrinkle about Keenan Allen. They called Mike Williams and he didn't answer. And then they pivoted to Keenan Allen, which is <laughs> a which crazy. is a fun little wrinkle there. I think Keenan Allen's going to be fantastic for a young quarterback. He's been with young quarterbacks, you know, over the last handful of years since Philip Rivers left, and he's the perfect he's the dex- dictionary definition of a security blanket for a quarterback. Right. He is perfect. He's one of the best route runners in the NFL. He catches everything. He's a great red zone target. He mm-hmm. runs every route in the route tree. Like he is perfect. Keenan Allen is going to go down as one of the most underrated wide receivers in the history of football. And it's because he was with the Chargers. Nobody talks about the Chargers. They always right. lose when they should win. It's always, you know, the blue jerseys are like the pinstripes for the Yankees. They're just, you know, uh, distracting everybody from the Petru, the, the, the right. you know, putrid Spanos run organization. Right. I think it was fantastic. For me, and I don't, first of all, um, hopefully you gave me kudos about Stefan Diggs last week when I was right. sick in bed. Um you did. That is an, that's probably my favorite trade. And, mm. and 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 I'll explain a couple different things. One, they can do a hard reset in Buffalo. Okay, that's one. Number two, and this is, I didn't really understand it when he still, because this is the first year of his of his extension, right? So he's yeah. going to get balloon money. It's like four years, man. That's a lot of money. When they cut it all off. Yeah. And they said, you're going to get one year. It's going to be the best year. And we're going to see. Houston can't afford to tie to anybody that kind of money from the wide receiver position when they're trying to completely overhaul that roster. And I think right. it's genius. Oh, they give him a second round pick. Who cares? You get Stefan Diggs for a year. Like, I think that that's a perfect, perfect trade. They're not tied to him after this year. You give him a little extra cheese this year with the elevated, with the elevated salary cap. And you've got him, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, like, and Dalton Schultz. And you've got, uh, Joe Mixon, you can have the best offense in the NFL. And if it doesn't work, see you later. 
I think it's genius. And we'll see if Stephon Diggs is truly wide receiver one or if Nico Collins is going to completely overshadow him in that offense. I think well, it's great. I, I personally think that Nico Collins is their number one wide receiver. Yeah. I think he's, you know, Stephon Diggs, uh, he's Stephon Diggs. Still a good player, 1,000-yard receiver, all that. But there was a steep, steady decline at the end of last year. And Alex, I got to tell you, I don't think that trade was very good. And I have it in one of my top three worst trades of the offseason because they wiped out the rest of the contract. To me, the problem with Stephon Diggs and the reason Buffalo wanted to get rid of rid of him is because he can be a malcontent in the locker room and he's a diva and he throws fits anytime that he's not given the ball. He's forced his way out of Minnesota, forced his way out of Buffalo. And now you have him on a one-year contract where he knows, hey, this season is all about my next contract. He's already one of the most selfish players in the NFL. What's going to happen when the Texans, rightfully so, throw the ball to Nico Collins and Tank Dell more than him, and he's there and he had a two-target, 12 yards, uh, one-catch day, and he's at his locker thinking, I'm not going to get money next year. My contract's going to be bad. But Is he going to blow up on Stroud? Is he going to throw a fit in the locker room? The disease of me really originates with Stephon Diggs. And I think taking away the last three years of the contract is going to make that amplified because he knows how much is on the line. And imagine just a year, it could work out. They could go to the Super Bowl, be the best offense in the league. But a year from now, the Texans could be without that second round pick that they traded. And Stephon Diggs could be on another team and they don't get a compensatory pick because he's already too old to get one. I just think there's a lot of bust potential. You're right, there's a lot of boom potential. But there's a lot of bust potential with that trade as well. So I had that with like well, uh, the e- or the Jets trading. They got rid of Bryce Huff, who's four yeah. years younger than Hassan Riddick, and then traded a third round pick in 2026 for Hassan Riddick, who's 30 years old. Like, why would the Jets give up a younger pass rusher with more potential that it was cheaper, and then pay a draft pick to get an older guy, and then trading for Mixon too? Like, why would you give up any draft capital for a running back at? Oh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So Diggs is kind of in that mix of some of the trades I didn't like as much. But I, I think we're both representing great points on how the trade could go. Yeah, and and the thing is, this is a true lightning in a bottle situation. Because right. like, it, it, so say they say they extend, they kept them, they kept the contract as is. They're going to pay him a boatload of money. Say that happens this year, and then you're tied to him for the next three seasons. That's right. a lot muddier. That's a lot stickier than having a one-year deal. And I'll tell you what, ain't nobody coached him like D'Amico Ryans will. Okay? (laughs) So D'Amico Ryans is the, he is the leader of that organization. And I'll tell you what, the one last thing, and then then we'll, we'll pop the break here in just a sec. I feel like, and I've been okay, I've been pretty close with the Bills over the last couple of years. Josh Allen running the ball and not going through his progressions nearly as much I think is going to be something that's removed from C.J. Stroud. He'll extend plays. He'll allow Stephon Diggs to get open a little bit more. Josh Allen goes through his progression. He goes, nope, right up the gut. Doesn't matter. Yep. He's that's going to run the ball. Point. Runs the ball 10, yeah, 12 times. Point. James Cook, they wanted to establish the run. They'll they'll run the ball. But C.J. Stroud's throwing the ball 40 times a game, and that's how they're going to win. And I think Stephon Diggs can take those Noah Brown targets, you know, 30% more of the Tank Dell targets. I think everybody's going to eat in Houston. It's going to be fun to watch. And you know what? If it's not – it's going to be incredibly glorious to watch it all blow up. Alex Clancy 100%. locked on Cardinals. Tyler Rowland locked on Titans. We are locked on NFL Thursday. Thank you for making Locked on NFL your first listen free wherever you get your podcast. And on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Best free agent deal so far. Next. This episode of Locked on NFL Thursday is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. Not cash, man. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers.
I want to talk about Stefan Diggs for another 45 minutes. Can we do that? <laughs> right, 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 right. Understand. Alex Lindsay, Tyler Rowling, Locked on NFL Thursday. Uh, it's time to pivot. Um, this is the portion of the show where Tyler gets to run down his list that he's got on the right side of his screen, most likely. And he's going to give his thoughts on the best free agent deal signed this offseason. And then I'm going to tell him where I agree and disagree with him. Tyler, go. Alex, you will not be surprised to hear this, but I do not have them up on my screen. I write Tyler. everything out with pen and paper. Everything. I am old school. I got notebooks. I burn through notebooks. Okay, literally, I am a notebook's worst Dang. enemy. It, absolutely, I'm old school. I got to write it like all out. Like trapper keepers? Yeah, I mean, not quite that, but yeah, like college ruled notebooks, dude. I'll, I'll never change. Uh, but with that being said, with that being said, some of the free agent deals that I really liked, and it was tough. There weren't a lot of them that I really liked. Alex, as you know, I have a tendency to skew negative. So I'm going through the list like, don't like this one. Don't like this one. Which ones do I do like? But number one that stood out to me was Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle formerly of the Miami Dolphins, going to the Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Four years, $110 million. I think we're seeing in the NFL with the paydays that we've seen from interior defensive linemen lately, I think we're seeing how important that interior pass rush is. I think the Raiders are really trying to build a physical football team in the mold of their head coach, Antonio Pierce, who was a defensive guy. And as a linebacker, he understands how important it is to have talent on the defensive line in front of you. So I just look at impact players that were actually signed this offseason. And Christian Wilkins is one of the only guys I think actually moves the needle. So really, not only is this about his deal, but it's about the Dolphins letting him go, which I think was a major mistake. mistake. They don't really have anybody to replace that production and his ability there. So Christian Wilkins with the Raiders, I think, was a very good deal. And especially you look at Josh Allen getting 150 million dollars. Mm -hmm. I, I like the deal with Chris Christian Wilkins. Four years, 110 million for the Raiders. Really, you know, 57 million guaranteed. So you want to look at the total guarantees there. I think that would make a lot of sense. Also, interior defensive line again. Leonard Williams staying with Seattle. Three years, 64 million. We see Christian Wilkins getting 110 million. You're seeing Derek Brown get, you know, 90 some million dollars. Leonard Williams is one of the better interior defensive yeah. linemen in the league and to only pay $64 million and keep him in Seattle. I like that a lot. And then Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen went to the Steelers, and it's three years, $41 million. Really, you look into the details of the contract, though, it's basically a one-year deal worth $13 million. And again, I got to point out the Texans and a move that I didn't like that they made. They gave Aziz Alshire a middling, average, you know the term jag in the NFL, just another guy. Yeah. Aziz Al Shire is just another guy. At line, you could switch him in with about 20 other middle linebackers in the NFL, and your defense would be exactly the same. They gave him $23 million of guaranteed money, the most guaranteed money of any linebacker. For Patrick Queen to be on the market and not get the most guaranteed money of any linebacker and it be Aziz Al Shire, that is such a steal for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I love that fit of Queen and the Steelers together, but to not give him the biggest inside linebacker contract of the all season, it, you know, it blew my mind. So I love that value that the Steelers got there, not giving up that guaranteed money and bringing in Patrick Queen. So those are the yeah. three moves right now that stand out to me. Do you disagree with those? Or is there any that you would point out that, that I didn't really mention? Yeah, you know, the Christian Wilkins one's an interesting one. I know that Antonio Pierce is trying to change the culture there. And right. for, you know, since its inception, at least over the last, last 30 years, they've been the most highly penalized team. It's been the same stuff over and over and over again, regardless of the coaches, regardless of the players are. It's the Raiders, okay? Christian Wilkins is one of the most jovial, team-friendly player like you see all of his mic'd up stuff where he's where he's I yelling know. at refs, joking and stuff. That's the kind of guy, while being an absolute enforcer and machine in the interior defensive line, having that personality to come in with Max Crosby to shore up that defensive line. I think I, it's a little puzzling to me because they don't have anything else figured out yet. They don't have a quarterback yet, so I don't really understand yeah. why they gave almost 100 million. But I mean, it's fine. I, I think it's it's um, lending in the positive trajectory, even though they gave him a lot of money. Patrick Queen, the one-year deal thing, they just want to see if Russell Wilson can work. 
I think a lot of this is going to be predicated upon what happens this year. And I think that's why they structured that deal as such. And Patrick Green going to the Steelers is just like, do you remember when Johnny Damon went from the, the Red Sox to the Yankees and it was like <laughs> this thing that's like, this never happens. Only Steve right. Finley used to play for every single team. And then now there's no, you know, th- there's nothing like that anymore. Those interdivisionally, we'll see. I mean, he's an off-ball linebacker. It's still not a premium position. Okay, Roquan right. Smith got a whole bunch of money, but we'll see if Patrick Queen is going in that, you know, you know, on that trajectory. For me, there's one that's home cooking. Jonah Williams signing with the Cardinals, coming oh. over from Cincinnati, can play either left tackle or right tackle. So can Paris Johnson Jr. For those yep. that listen to Locked On Cardinals, if you don't protect Kyler Murray, ain't none of this going to work. And I think bring right. him in two years, 30 mil, he's wanted to play with Kyler Murray. Like, it's that's a home run, okay? That's a home run for me. Now – there's one more that is, of course, escaping me um, at this given time. Um, I, I had two that I was going back and forth with, and I think my new favorite team that's not the Cardinals, my buddy hosts that show. If Calvin Ridley works, that's going to be the most exciting thing in Nashville in a long time. You got him. You got DeAndre Hopkins. No more Derrick Henry. And it's like, if Will Levis works, that's going to be what everybody thought Zach, Will, Zach Wilson could be. You know, they're not exactly the same, but the flashy factor with Will Levis hucking the ball down the field is going to be right. super exciting. And then the Derrick Henry signing was the one that I forgot, and I just went through there organically. I think that's a home run move. It's a home run move. Yeah. Derrick Henry deserves to be in a position to touch the ball 25 times a game, score 17 or 18 touchdowns, and be maybe their last missing piece in an effort to get over the, the hump of Patrick Mahomes. Well, I think there's the obvious of you have Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry in the same backfield. There's, I mean, that is fireworks, right? I mean, yeah. who who doesn't want to see that happen? And as somebody who covered Derrick Henry, yes, he's lost a little bit of a step since his 2020 2000 yard season. Yes, you do kind of tip your hand a little bit when he's in the backfield because he's limited in terms of what he can do in the passing game. But Lamar Jackson kind of cancels that out, in my opinion, right. because you can't if you want to, you know, slam down on all the double teams and come screaming off the edge to try to get into the backfield so Derrick Henry can't cut back, well, guess what? There goes Lamar Jackson around the outside. So Lamar Jackson's presence almost helps Derrick Henry as much as Derrick Henry's presence helps Lamar Jackson. So one year, $9 million. When you see Josh Jacobs getting four years, $48 million, and Tony Pollard, who the Titans signed, getting three years, $24 million. And then you see Derrick Henry, one year, $9 million, two years, 20 Feels like a pretty good move for the Baltimore Ravens, even if it does, of course, break my heart a little <laughs> bit. But with that being said, that is going to do it for this Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Glad to have Alex back in the chair, but shout out to Michelle, who filled in ad- ad- admirably last yeah. week. Draft season is here, folks. We're going to have a ton of draft conversations for you next Thursday. Then we're going to be doing a mock draft on the day of the draft in two weeks. But a lot of good Locked On NFL shows coming before that, so make sure to tune back in tomorrow. As I tell you guys every week, stay safe out there and start your weekend early.